Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, from Weather Risk, your commander of chaos, your colonel of confusion, your captain of catastrophe. Let's talk about this week in weather. Uh, sorry about not doing a, a video last week, a little under the weather. Um, so sometimes, you know, I usually wear myself down and do a lot of hours on during the winter, and... Uh, I get myself a little worn down, so last week I took the week off to make sure I didn't get sick, because oftentimes I do during the winter months. Anyway, so we're back in the saddle here. Uh, yeah, there's an early end of the winter, no doubt about it. It seems that way to me. I don't see any reason to think it's not. Um, you know, March went surprise, winter event, very unlikely. This pattern, we'll get into that. You know, maybe I've seen a lot of people talking about something happening in March. I'm skeptical. I know why they're talking about it. I just don't think it's going to happen. I'll explain why. Um, you know, also the other thing is, a sustained cold and snowy winter patterns in the eastern U.S., it looks increasingly likely. I know there are clowns out there that keep talking about how the winter pattern looks just like 57 and 58 or 2009 and 10 or 2002, 2003 or 1977, 78 or 69, 70. It's all bullshit. That's not what's, gonna, that's not what's happening. These sustained winter cold patterns and the changing climate, the warming climate is not going to occur in the eastern United States uh, very often. It's becoming increasingly more difficult. Going into this winter, we had a lot of climate models, which, you know, the last three or three winters, they all indicated strongly it was, they were going to be mild winters, and they were. This year, they all flipped. They went crazy. They started showing a mild, a stormy, cold winter, a lot of snow potential, an active storm pattern for the east coast, the eastern U.S. They started back in the October and November climate model runs, and they kept showing that and it never happened. All the climate models were completely wrong. And finally, the other point I want to make here before I get started is, you know, in the future, if you want to look and get something in March to get excited over at the 312-hour or 450-hour or 600-hour extended models, just do yourself a favor and wait for the event to show up a couple times before you go crazy, all right? Just make sure it's getting some consistency here, all right? Here we go. Uh, this is, here is the uh, website, as, as usual. Again, uh, lots of different products here for the spring and summer season. My grain traders, you can see that in the shop uh, tab up here. Uh, and then, of course, here are the two social media pages on the Twitter. So the Snowstorm page and then the one in threads. And then, of course, the uh, grain page, Twitter page there. And then uh, this here is the Facebook page as well. All right, let's get started here. I wanted to bring this up to show you what the, how badly extended models were, have been doing. Um, now, this is from January 29th, all right, the image on the left, valid for February 29th, all right? This is what they were showing, a big ridge on the West Coast of North America extending up to Alaska and the Arctic region, a negative NAO, a negative Arctic oscillation. See the Greenland block, the, 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 the negative AO right here, and the polar vortex dropping south, and a strong negative anomaly in the southeastern states implying a southern U.S. A southern U.S. low, and look at the Arctic air coming out of the lines here, dropping out of Canada. What actually? Now that's what it was showing. Yet on February 13th, valid for February 28th, two weeks later. This is only a two-week forecast. This is a four-week forecast. This is a two-week forecast. A monster trough on the West Coast, not a ridge, monster trough. Okay, no negative NAO at all. The polar vortex is way going to be way north. The Arctic oscillation is not negative; it's positive. And there's no negative anomaly in, the, in Georgia or the southern states. Complete, total, awful forecast in every possible way. Another example of it here. Okay. This is, again, the GFS and SOM on the left, the European on the right. They're both valid for February 13th, uh, 14th, Valentine's Day. This is from the 29th of January for two weeks. Okay, or 15 days, I should say. Fe February uh, 14th. GFS, European. Both showing the same thing. Very strong ridge on the west coast of North America extending up to the Arctic region. The polar vortex, strong and active. A split jet stream. See the southern jet here? The northern jet with the ridge. There's your southern jet. Both models had it. Very strong negative anomalies in the southern jet stream. Strong Greenland block and negative NAO in Greenland. See that right here, the orange? Right? Okay. What, what actually happened? What, what, for February 14th, what did the upper air map actually look like? Nothing like that. Absolutely nothing like that. This is only two-week forecast, total bust. Okay, there is an Omega Ridge, but it's not on Western Canada. It's in Alaska and the Northeast Pacific. 
there's that. So that's one thing. There's no sustained direct flow of coal there from Northwest Canada into the Midwest or the Eastern United States. All right. The trough is not on the southeastern states or on the, anything like that. It's off in the Western Atlantic, and there's no negative NEO, no Greenland block, and the polar vortex is way north. Could not be a bigger busted forecast. Totally awful, not even close to this. Not even close. So what I'm saying here is that you, you start seeing, again, the 312-hour, 360-hour, the 400-hour out. You know, look at what's going on this winter before you go crazy, Okay. Here's the current, so this is from February 21, I should say yesterday. Okay, there was the pattern in the upper left, the 500 millibar pattern, the trough is leaving, now Bahamas into the Western Atlantic Ocean, the ridge was building in. This is the California system falling apart now, a piece of energy here in California, which is now in the Rockies, Plain States, which is now moved eastward here, as you can see. And then um, again, you can see uh, the, the, this ridge developing very strongly in um, uh, the, uh, uh, plains into the Midwest here. There's your current cold front moving through the Midwest with the rain in the, in the Northeast into the Ohio Valley. And eventually, of course, it's going to, uh, there's the front in more detail. You can see it very clearly um, moving through. And there's a warm front ahead of the cold front. So, you know, it's, like, it's bringing up the warm air. Uh, you can see temperatures much, much warmer in the Tennessee Valley, southeastern states. The front will come through. We're going to get our rain. Not a surprise. Uh, very easy forecast. Not a big deal. There's the front here for Friday morning going through the southeastern states, clearing the mid-Atlantic and southern New England. Okay. Bada boom, bada bing. Not a big deal. Well, what happens next? All right. Well, that energy from California finally pushes in, and we get uh, two pieces of energy we're trying to merge here. So uh, what ends up happening is we have three different pieces of energy. All right, we have the trough. Let me blow this map up a little bit. You can see it. So you have this trough in the Western Atlantic Ocean. We have the piece of energy from the California big rainstorm now in the Midwest and another piece coming down from the Great Lakes, from James Bay. All three of these pieces want to get together, but when they do, it's too far to the east. Look at the, they just miss, okay? If all three of these X's could line up to perfectly and the trough was a little further to the west, there would be a big storm on the east coast. But that's not what's happening. The trough gets together on the East Coast, which means the surface low pressure development is in the Atlantic Ocean, out to sea, and it's a mess. So there we go. Meanwhile, California, there's that big giant upper low sitting in the Eastern Pacific. <clears throat> All right. The temperatures as a result here, this is by day uh, four or five. The trough finally leaves the East Coast. The ridge continues to expand from the um, Texas, the Rockies, into the Ohio Valley. And on the West Coast, we have another piece of energy coming down here. See, from the west of Alaska, dropping southward. And then the upper low in the eastern Pacific is now moving towards California. These two pieces of energy, the upper low off the California coast and the big giant trough of western Canada, British Columbia, the Pacific Northwest, are going to merge into a massive feature for the 6 to 10 day. Now, the next five days, the temperatures are fairly warm on the East Coast, but not that warm, as you can see, okay, a couple of degrees above normal. But west of the Appalachians and the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes temperatures are, are soaring relative to normal. All right, let's take a look at our teleconnections here. Now, again, we have four teleconnections or jet stream patterns, special jet stream configurations. We call them teleconnections in the weather business. There's two on the Pacific side. There's two on the Atlantic side. So the EPO is the Alaskan Ridge or Alaskan Trough, depending whether it's a positive or negative. The PNA is the West Coast Ridge or West Coast Trough, depending whether it's positive or negative. On the Atlantic side, we have the Arctic Oscillation, which is the polar vortex, whether it's strong or weak. And then we have the Greenland Block or the NAO, or sometimes the positive NAO, which is the Greenland Low. So let's take a look at these teleconnections. All right. This is the European, the Arctic Oscillation. We'll do the Atlantic side first. Notice all positive values here. See the yellows and oranges and reds? These are positive values. The darker the red, the stronger the positive value. Likewise, the dark, with, the, with the negative values, the light greens and then the dark greens and even blues, the darker the color, the more negative the value. So what happens here is we're strongly positive for the Arctic Oscillation. If you want cold and you want snow in the eastern U.S., you want this to be negative. Notice that around the middle of the month, March 7th or 8th, it goes about negative. And then after March 15th, you get a strong signal from all these different model runs. These are 50 different members of the European ensemble showing negative Arctic oscillation. That's a good sign if you like cold and snow. 
Here's the GFS Ensemble. Now that has 30 members, not 50, but again, notice the trend. Once you get to March 10th or 15th, look at all the dark greens that show up here. Okay, modded greens, dark greens, and blues, indicating a lot of members are showing a strongly negative Arctic Oscillation after the 15th of the month. This here is the NAO, the Greenland Block. This is the European, again, 50 different members. Notice what happens after the middle of the month. It's strong, there's a strong signal here for negative values. Some of them are slightly negative, some of them are strongly negative, but just the general trend after the 15th of the month. The GFS is showing even stronger trend. Some of the GFS is showing it going negative by March 7th or 8th. I think that's bullshit, but certainly by March 15th, you get a much stronger signal here. Now on the Pacific side, this is the P, this is your P and A pattern. Okay, for if you like cold and snow, you want this to be positive. Right now it's negative. It goes negative here February 26th to March 7th. Then notice the signal here for going positive after March 15th. All right, good. Here's the GFS. Now this does not have nearly as strong a signal as the European does. Okay, it goes positive around after March 15th, but the signal is much weaker. Compare that to this. You can see it's much weaker. And then the Alaskan Ridge or Alaskan Trough, again, you want this to be negative if you like cold and snow in the eastern U.S. You can see it's, it's neutral now. It goes strongly positive February 26th to March 7th, March 8th, and then it begins to go negative again somewhat here uh, after March 15th, and the GFS Ensemble showing the same sort of thing. All right. The MJO, as you can see, is now in... Uh, Followed all the way around, never made it into phase eight, one or two days, and jumped into the neutral circle. It stayed in phase seven all of February, a good, good portion of February, and it messed up the pattern. And it never got into phase eight in any sustained way. Now it's in the neutral circle. They're right there, the neutral circle. See it? Okay. All the models are showing. Uh, this is the GFS, the European. I could post the Australian, the Canadian, what have you. They're going to phase three or phase four, okay, in February and March. Well, what does that mean? Well, this is what the pattern looks like in phase four in February and March. So you have a trough on the West Coast, not a ridge, and you have a bit of a trough in Greenland into the Great Lakes in New England. And you have a flat ridge over Texas and the Gulf Coast states. <clears throat> There's some blocking in Greenland, not a lot. So what happens is the flow splits, and you're getting a kind of troughing in the Great Lakes in New England, but not really favorable for like winter storms. Okay, it's a little on the cool side, not cold, uh, not a blowtorch. All right, the trough on the West Coast keeps the West Coast stormy, um, and the southern states look fairly dry, but it's a pretty active pattern, but it's not a particularly noteworthy in terms of winter weather at all for the eastern U.S. Now, there are indications that the uh, polar vortex is going to split or weaken. Um, the winds are going to reverse. So what I'm talking about here is these, the GFS ensemble, the, these graphs measures the winds, and the winds right now <clears throat> are blowing from west to east. Sometimes the winds reverse direction when the polar vortex gets very weak or elongated. And they drop into the negative values, which we can see the GFS clearly showing here around March 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 10th. Very strong negative values. The European is showing the same sort of thing, March 7th. Which this means the polar vortex is going to get very weak and either elongate or split. Now, it's done this twice before this winter, and a lot of people got excited over it, and the winter never changed. There's a bias for people thinking that because the vortex splits or weakens or becomes elongated, it means it's going to impact the eastern U.S. There's a lot of other places the polar vortex weakening could impact besides the eastern U.S. It's Scandinavia and Europe and Central Russia and Mongolia and northern China and Siberia and so on and so forth. It doesn't always have to impact the eastern U.S. So keep that in mind. All right. In the 6 to 10 day, like we talked about before, um, let me blow this, blow this map up here a little bit. Um, front, there we go. Okay. Remember these two features here getting together on the West Coast, right? The upper low coming in towards California, the monster trough dropping down from Alaska into British Columbia, the Pacific Northwest, the 6 to 10 day, boom, a gargantuan trough here, which moves eastward, all right? And this is, um, I believe this is 100, this is uh, February 27th, 28th. Now, in response to this huge um, a trough moving from the Rockies to the plains, we get a gargantuan ridge in the eastern United States, and temperatures really warm up. Now, on top of that, notice there's another trough here coming in behind it. This is going to drop down behind this one, right? 
So because this trough is dropping down to this one, this trough here is going to go over the top of the ridge. It's not going to displace it. So there's going to be no cold air coming in behind this trough, very little cold air. And you can see there's the, the surface map. With this first trough coming eastward, it looks like this. All right, this is the upper left is 27th of February, and the bottom is the 29th of February. A lot of warm air ahead of the front, and then snow in the Dakotas, uh, rain to snow in Iowa and Minnesota, snow in uh, Wisconsin and the Western Great Lakes. Now, behind it, there's not a lot of cold air. It's mostly Pacific air, so temperatures really don't cool off that much. Temperatures really get warm ahead of the front. This is February 28th. Look at these readings. Quite impressive. All right. Then in uh, late on a 6 to 10 day. Now, let me show you another problem here. All right. This is from early this uh, Thursday morning. The European, operational European, has a monster trough moving into the Great Lakes and the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. People are getting excited about this. Notice it's negatively tilted. This could mean the cold front would stall and low pressure would drive cold air behind the front into the cold air producing winter weather in the Northeast, New England, the Northern Mid-Atlantic, the mountains, so on and so forth, right? Now, but the ensemble doesn't show that at all. There's no trough here at all. Look at the totally difference. This is the same model run. This is the zero Z. This is the Thursday morning European. See? Same model run. No trough. A positive anomaly. But instead, everybody reacted to this and they ignored this. I don't know why, they, but that's what they do. Meanwhile, the other features are correct. This is clearly wrong. This positive anomaly here, see the red and the brown? It's there. So that's the same. See the vortex? See this negative anomaly here? That's the same. See the monster trough in Gulf Alaska? That's the same. It's this feature right here that the Europeans screwed up. Okay. Now we go further out in time. This is 198 hours out. This is the European. You can see the trough is right here. This is March 1st. And a nice ridge in the eastern United States. Very strong. There's some sort of low pressure on the southern jet stream in Texas and the Delta. So that could bring rain to that area. And then you can see as the trough amplifies and remains on the west coast, this is now March 2nd. Very strong ridge, Midwest, eastern United States, temperatures are well above normal. The polar vortex is far, far to the north. Look at the temperatures. Wow, 6 to 10 day, way above normal. Okay. Now, normally, of course, the Midwest and the Great Lakes and New England, their temperatures are still relatively cold. So the same air mass, which in Kentucky and Tennessee is going to give you 5 or 8 degrees above normal, is going to give you 10, 12, 14 degrees above normal in the Great Lakes and the upper Midwest and New England. So keep that in mind as well. It's a little deceptive. In 11 to 15 day, well, what's going on here? Pattern remains the same. First trough is here. Again, we saw the trough coming in this way, right? So this trough now moves through the Rockies and then towards the West Coast and the Rockies. We can see it here. There it is. But the other trough, which is coming down, is coming from Alaska. So this trough goes, when this trough is gone, this trough comes down. You see that? Right into it. And again, because this trough is coming south, this trough does not get a chance to attack the ridge. It has to lift over the top of the ridge. And look, see how the trough weakens? Look how strong it is here. And look how it weakens here. Because this ridge does not get displaced. This trough keeps this ridge in place, and this trough weakens because of it. Okay? Sometimes these troughs move into the ridges, they knock them down. The pattern goes back to normal. That's not what happens here. And you can see the polar vortex is way far to the north. This is March 4th. This is March 7th. This is a very warm pattern, folks, and this is right. This trough has a little rain with it in the cold front, and once it reaches the east coast and a, a little mild air, no cool air behind it. And this trough keeps the pattern in place. Look at this. Very impressive. Finally, 11 to 15 day temperatures. Whew, it's warm. So now, again, will the pattern flip in mid-March? Maybe. I don't think so, but maybe. Okay. It would be a lot more convincing if we could get the MGO to go into a cold phase here, but it doesn't do that. It goes back into the neutral circle, as you can see. Right through, uh, this is March 23rd, March 23rd. It's not going into phase eight or one. It doesn't do that at all. So again, I doubt if it's going to chill. Flip. I know there's a lot of indications up here, these teleconnections, the polar vortex, the, 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 the southern stratospheric warming. I don't believe any of it. It hasn't impacted the winter so far. I don't think it's going to impact it here in March either. I could be wrong, but that's how I see it. I'm meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on the Twitter page and over on the website.